Okay. This should be good. And like that. Okay. I also need attendance. And I need eye clicker. Yes. Okay. Good morning. You have a guest? We, we do have a guest today in lecture. You know, I don't think he's going to speak, though. Oh. <laughs> He's very quiet. He's very shy. And uh, he's usually pretty good at chilling out while mom teaches. So <laughs> I appreciate y'all patience. Okay. All right. So uh, Shelby. Oh, Shelby, if you want the iClicker points, you have to use the iClicker Reef app. So you won't be able to get the points today if you don't use the Reef app and you're at home. But I can mark you as present. Today is 11.3. OK. I can't, oh. I'm not muted. Okay, I'm glad y'all can hear me. That's great. So Shelby, check in when you can hear me. Maybe she can hear me. Okay, great. So Shelby, what I was saying earlier is that if you want to get the eye clicker points and you're at home, you have to use the iClicker Reef app. Otherwise, you can't get the points. I went ahead and marked you down as present, um, and I'll go in and edit that separately. But if you want the iClicker points, you have to get the Reef app. I think there's a 14-day trial. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to be out for more than 14 days, I think you can do it with just the trial and not have to buy. I've only do it. So if you've never used Reef before, you should be able to do it with the free 14 day trial. Okay, we are close to being ready. Is that the binder for our class? <laughs> Is that fronts only or front and back? No, that's front only. That's front only. Okay, so that's, that's better. <laughs> At least y'all have a good, um, a good, uh, no, you did not miss the joke of the day. I have not given it yet. Y'all have a good sense of humor though. Okay, so you should be able to do, Shelby, the 14-day um, the trial. Okay, so y'all ready for y'all joke of the day? So this one is Halloween themed. Um, so why did the moon have a bellyache? 
It was a full moon. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, so if you have not done so already, please go ahead and check in on attendance on iClicker. And then I'm going to talk about, guess what, changes to the schedule. <laughs> All right, so I was thinking that we have been through so much this semester, so much. And with the hurricane, um, a lot of people had big power outages and um, evacuations and all that kind of stuff. So like, I understand that. And I'm trying to express to you that I'm empathetic and sympathetic. Um, it has been a challenge of a semester. It has, and y'all have really stayed dedicated and done a really great job of staying on top of your work, your homework, all that kind of stuff. So if you had a power outage and you didn't already email me, please email me if you need an extension on a homework um, because of a power outage. Okay, uh, you, you can't do your homework if the power's out. I get it. So most people have emailed me, but if you have not and you, um, you experienced a power outage, just let me know. Okay, um, so the big change is that today was supposed to be part two of chapter nine. Well, what I'm anticipating is that you've watched all the chapter nine lecture videos up until today. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go, oh, see, no, I did do this wrong. We will work on, see, this was supposed to be section. Oh, that's watch the, yeah, no, no, no. So you were supposed to watch the videos and now we're gonna work on the first half of the chapter nine in-class problems today. So we're really gonna work on the in-class problems from one, two, three, do I not have four on the list? Oh, no, it is, it's just a weird big box. And chapter four. So we're gonna do the practice problems from these today. And then we're gonna do the practice problems from these on Thursday. But that means that our exam is pushed back to Thursday. Okay? Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. From Thursday to Tuesday. Thank you. It has been, it's been a day. <laughs> so um, that gives you the whole weekend to finish that chapter nine homework, to get caught up, and to get prepared for that exam. So I think that's going to benefit y'all a lot. Okay? So please take advantage of that and use that time wisely. Remember that your lowest exam score from one, two, three, and four will be dropped. So if you have one you want to drop, please focus on these two chapters and let's do really well. Okay, so we can drop that lowest one, which means that Thursday we would have one day to cover something. <laughs> I have decided to change that into an exam review time. So instead of hosting an exam review outside of normal class time, we will use that last day as an exam review. Any questions on that? And I'll get you something for that day soon. <laughs> soon, okay? And then it'll be exam week. Questions on the schedule? Did you decide for the final year? I know it's been pushed on paper. Yes. Have you decided if it's going to be multiple choice or if it's going to be multiple choice on paper? It will be at least mostly multiple choice. Okay. It will at least be mostly multiple choice. There may be some free response, but it will not be a large portion of the exam. Once I know for sure, I'll let you know. It's my first semester, so I'm still trying to figure things out. Um, but it will be at least mostly multiple choice. Good. Chapter 10 is cut out from the final, right? Chapter 10 is cut out from the final. Yes. We're doing the best we can. Yes, ma'am. I did. I heard so another professor. So another professor told me that the tutoring center is having like review time for chemistry exams for all of like 105, 106, 109, all those classes. And they said that you don't have to be you don't have to pay the $25 to already be part of the tutoring. You can go anyway. Um, but I don't know the details about it. But if you go to Pelche, you know where the tutoring center is? And it's in Pelche. Go to the office and ask them because I don't know. Somebody told me that in passing this morning and I haven't had time to look into it. Does anybody even on, on chat and anybody else in the classroom know about it? Anybody? They do it every year. 
Okay. I don't see, I don't know any details, but I do know that the tutoring center is doing something special for chemistry. So if anybody finds out before I do, please post it in the chat, in the forum, you know, the discussion forum that y'all can post in, please go ahead and put that information there. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we get rolling? Y'all are real troopers. Y'all got this. Okay. All right. So let me close this. And we're going to go do some clicker questions. So we're going to pick up because usually on the first day that we start a chapter, we pick up the end of the clicker questions from the previous chapter. So I think we are on this one. Okay. So let me do view full screen. Okay. Like that. And this one. Okay. So we got 70 people today. That's great. All right. So select the most concentrated solution. Giving you a minute and a half. Ten seconds. Oh, and we gained four people. All right, so what did y'all say? Oh no. Okay. What is what are these PPM and PPB? What does all that mean? Parts per million and parts per billion. Do y'all remember? And that's what the same thing, parts per million, parts per billion, same thing. Do y'all remember what I said? Why do we use parts per billion or parts per million? It's really a small, small, small concentration. There's only one value on this whole thing that's not a really, really small concentration, and that's B. If I were to convert percent, tell me what would that be? It would be parts per what? Parts per hundred. That's right. A hundred percent, right? It's out of a hundred. So parts per hundred is going to be significantly more than parts per million and even way more than parts per billion, right? If you have only one part per billion other stuff, it's only a little bit. If you have one part per million, oh, you got a little bit more. But now if you got one per hundred, that's a whole lot more. Right? So y'all see that? Yeah? Okay, so it should have been B. Should have been B. Okay, let's try it. Let's try another one. We're gonna get better today, right? Okay, so here's a little bit of a math one. Y'all wanna get out your calculators? Give y'all a second, get out your calculators. Y'all know that's my favorite sound, it's the click of calculators. Okay. So our question is, how many moles of potassium ions are present in three liters of 0.5 molar aqueous potassium chloride?
And I'll give you all two minutes on this one. It's a math. I'll give you all two minutes. Is the mic high enough, loud enough? Good. Everybody in the back can hear me today? Open for two minutes. I'll give you all two minutes and 30 seconds, and that's as far as I'm going. I see I only have 52. So, two minutes, 30 seconds. All right, so if I want to know moles, right, what am I given in this equation, in this problem? I have a 0 0.50 molar solution of KCl, right? Well, what does molar mean? What does the big M mean? Moles per what? per liter, so that you have to remember. So I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna say this is moles per liter, okay? Now, what else was I given in this problem? I have three liters. So I can multiply times 3.0 liters. What happens to my liters? They cancel. Now, what am I left in? I'm left in moles. Be careful with this. I, I set this problem up so it wouldn't mess you up if you did it, but I wanted to use this as a, as a point. I'm left in moles of KCl. Is that what the problem asked me for? No, it's not. And I know a bunch of y'all probably didn't do this, but it doesn't change the answer. It doesn't change the answer. So I know in one mole of KCl, how many moles of potassium ions do I have? Anybody? One, one. If I had, if I have KCl, that means, whoa. Oops, sorry, y'all. Okay, if I have one mole of KCl, because I have one and one, that means I have one mole of K plus and I have one mole of Cl minus. What if I had, um, Calcium, CaCl. What's my formula for my ionic compound that has calcium and chlorine? CaCl2. So in one mole of CaCl2, I have one mole of calcium ion, and I have what? Two moles of chlorine ion. Okay. So. It didn't actually change it because you're multiplying by one, but I just wanted to point that out to y'all. So you should have gotten 1.5 moles of K plus. Okay, so that's just one thing I wanted to kind of use that as a as a good moment. So what, what am I looking for? 1.5, so that's A. Good, most of y'all got it. Okay, so be careful with that. All right, let's go again. All right. Oh, I didn't want to do that one. I'm not doing that one. Okay, here we go. 
What is the molar concentration of a lidocaine solution that's prepared by diluting? Tell me what formula. Yeah, okay. Uh, the prepared by diluting five mils of a one molar lidocaine stock solution to the mark in a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. I'll give you till three minutes. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, so I wanna know what did y'all say? Oh yes, very nice. That's awesome, that's awesome. So that is the correct answer, E is the correct answer. Let's show how we did that. What was our initial concentration? Our initial, right, is our stop. So here's our stock solution. So we had five ml times one molar equal to a final concentration, right? It's 25 mils. Did we have to say how much water we're adding? No, because really it would be approximately 20 mils. But what we really want is that final volume of the entire solution, not just how much water we're adding, but that final volume. So our final volume is 25 ml, and then we don't know our volume final, right? And so when you do the math, right, you should divide by 25, divide by 25, and you should get 0 0.20 molar, okay? The way, I'm sorry, what? Oh, our concentration final, thank you. Concentration final, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. One more. One more today. Oh, that's just, it is so hard to fit everything with all this junk going on. Okay. So select the correct statement regarding solutes crossing a cell membrane. Minute and a half.
10 seconds. Okay, so magnesium ions are more permeable than small neutral amino acid molecules. If it's small, if it's small and neutral, is it going to get through the membrane easily? Yes. Small and neutral gets through the membrane easily. Ions, not so much. Because they're charged, they're going to have a hard time going through there. So magnesium ions are less permeable. Okay. Water molecules are more permeable than sodium ions. Does water get across the membrane on its own? Yes, there are two ways that water can get across the membrane. What are the two ways? Osmosis, osmosis, which is simple diffusion across the membrane. And what's the other way? Facilitated diffusion. It can go through a pore. There are water like channels, right? It doesn't require ATP, but it can get through a channel, right? So water molecules are more permeable than sodium ions. Just like magnesium ions, are sodium ions gonna get through the membrane just by diffusion? No. If it's charged, it's not getting through the membrane because it won't go through those nonpolar um, tails. It just, it won't. So B's good. Sodium ions are more permeable than oxygen molecules. What do we know about an oxygen molecule? It's nonpolar, right? It's small, it's nonpolar. It's going to slip right through. So sodium ions are less permeable than oxygen. Proteins are more permeable than glucose, a small polar molecule. No, proteins, proteins can be huge. They can be charged. They can be all kinds of different things. Proteins are trapped inside of the cell because of the cell membrane, right? We know there's lots of proteins inside of a cell. Well, why do they stay in the cell? Because they can't get across the membrane, right? But glucose, what do we know about glucose? It's small, it is polar, but it's not charged. So this is one of those that can get through, not as well as like oxygen, but it can still get through. Okay, so it is less. This one is less, so it should have been B. All right, close. All right, so let's go do some chapter nine stuff. And then next time we see each other, I will have some chapter nine clicker questions for you. Okay, let me hide this. Come on. Okay. So now we're talking acids and bases, acids and bases. So tell me, what is the difference between an acid and a base? Acid will donate, what does it donate? Hydrogen ions or protons. Base, accept. Good, 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 good. So when we look at an acid, an acid is like HCl. Right? It's going to give up that hydrogen. Whereas a base is like sodium hydroxide. Right? Here's a hydroxide ion. It's going to go OH minus, and it's going to pick up, let's say, the hydrogen. And what's it going to form? Right? So what can you do? You can accept or you can donate. All right, indicate if each of the following statements is characteristic of an acid or a base. Neutralized by a base, that's an acid, All right? Because we said a strong acid plus a strong base will give us a salt plus water, All right? That's a neutralization reaction. Produces OH minus in water, that's a base. Right, we just said NaOH. If we put NaOH in water, what's it gonna make? Na plus plus OH minus. Sorry. 
has a slippery feel at the base, but we're not going to try it out, right? Good. Okay. Donates a proton. That's an acid. Y'all are rocking and rolling. Okay. And I got to put my chat up. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not ignoring my chat. All right, in your own words, explain how in an aqueous solution, H plus and H3O plus represent similar things. So what's in an aqueous solution? What does that mean? This is in water. So tell me what happens if I have H plus and I have water. Plus. So in actuality, this does not exist. Does not exist in water, right? Because water acts as a base and water can act as an acid. So water can either pick up a hydrogen and then turn into H3O plus, or it can actually donate one and turn into um, OH minus. So depending on the situation, but he, in this situation, right, we have extra hydrogen ions. So what are they going to do? They're going to react with water and they're going to make H3O plus. So this is what actually occurs inside the body, inside of cells, inside of anything. Okay, good. All right, now we're going to look at some equations and we're going to identify things that are the acid and things that are the base. Right, so I like to look for things that are similar on the left and the right. So I think it's easy to find water. So let's do water first and let's see what water does. So here are the two things that sort of look like water to me, right? I have H2O liquid and it's turning into H3O plus. So did it accept or excuse me, donate a hydrogen. It accepted it. So if it accepts it, is it an acid or is it a base? A what? Go, go back up to your definition because I'm hearing both. Acid donates, base accepts. Okay, so if you're going to accept, you're going to be a base. So this is our base. And then are we asked, no, we're not asked for the conjugate, okay? We're just saying, are we um, in a, a base or, a, or an acid? So this is our acceptor, okay? So, okay, what's next? Our H3PO4 turning into H2PO4. What happened with this one? We lost, we lost a hydrogen. Um, so we call this the hydrogen donor. So what do we call the hydrogen donor? This is an acid. So just this species right here is the acid and just this species right here is the base. Okay. All right, uh, PO4 three minus plus water yields PO4 two minus plus OH minus. All right, now I'm going to look at my water. What does it turn into? OH minus, what did it do? It lost one, it lost the hydrogen. So it's the hydrogen donor, right? It donated that hydrogen. So the donor is called an acid. So let's look at our other species, PO4 three minus. That one is going to HPO4 two minus. I gained a hydrogen. So this one is the base because it's the hydrogen acceptor. Good. All right. Okay, now we're gonna go on to strong acids and bases. So just like I said in the video, um, I'm gonna give you a lot of different things on, um, on the exam, but it's gonna take you a lot of time to go and hunt 
if every question you get to, you're going to the exam resources to get it. I'm not saying don't use the exam resources, use them, but try to use the tips that I give you as shortcuts, right? So what's the, um, what's the rule for strong acids and strong bases? There, there's some of it right here, because I wrote it on the video. This is for acids, right? If you're binary, what does binary mean? Bi meaning two. So if we have two elements, one's gonna be hydrogen, one's gonna be something else. The little mnemonic is I, maybe, I bring clay. So I, Br, and Cl. So if I have H, I, H, Br, H, Cl, these are going to be strong acids. Okay. There are a second type of acid that contain more than just two elements. We call them tertiary acids or oxygen containing acids. Right. And so what you do is you look at those acids and you say, does it have two more oxygens than hydrogens? And if the answer is yes, then you are strong. If the answer is no, then you are weak. There'll be a table on the exam, but just trying to save you a little bit of time. Okay, so which of these are strong acids? Are any of these binary? No. So we're gonna go with our second rule here. Two more oxygens than hydrogen. So how many hydrogens do I have in A? I have one H and then I have two O's. Do I have two more oxygens than hydrogen? No. So I am weak. How about B? I have one hydrogen, I have three oxygens. Do I have two more oxygens than hydrogen? Yes, so I am strong. I feel bad talking about myself that way. I'm weak, I'm strong, it's weird. All right, H3PO4, I have three hydrogens, four oxygens. Do I have two more oxygens than hydrogen? No, so I am weak. Yeah. Two. Yeah. If you write it just the way I wrote it, you're you're probably not going to make that mistake, right? It's okay. It's okay. Look, we learn it now. This is the time to learn, right? It's all good. It's all good. All right. So, which of the following are strong bases? Really, the strong bases are group one, and then strontium and barium. And strontium and barium, SR, no, strontium, SC, strontium, stront, yeah. Oh my gosh. Strontium and barium? No, SR. I like, a, what is going on with me today? Strontium and BA. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm having a day. <laughs> so group one, strontium and barium. And strontium and barium are in group two but not all group two um, bases are strong bases, but this is a really good, it's a good rule of thumb, okay? All right, so magnesium hydroxide. Strong or weak? Is it in group one or strontium or barium? No, it's in group two. This is a group two, but it's not strontium hydroxide or barium hydroxide. So what must it be? Weak. Okay, NaOH, is it in group one or strontium or barium? It's in group one, so this is in group one. So yes, it's strong. Okay, FeOH3, that's not even in group two. That's a transition metal. 
So this is weak. Okay. All right. So now the thing about strong acids and strong bases, if we write an equation for HCl and we put it into water, right? It is going to completely ionize. What does that mean? What will it turn into if it ionizes? Ions of hydrogen, but we don't really write them as hydrogen. We write them as H3O plus, plus Cl minus, right? All the way. So we write, write that as a one-way arrow. You can't go back. If you have something that is weak, so if you come up here and you pick one of our weak bases like HF, if I took HF and I put it into water, eh, it's going to ionize. You're going to make some H plus. You're going to make some F minus. But the thing with this is that it can go backwards. And actually, you have the majority in this state. It's still hooked together. It doesn't like to break up. Okay, so think about this like if, if you knew two people who were in a relationship and they had a weak relationship, would you try to break them up? No, you try to help them out, right? It, you, want, you want them to stay together. That's kind of right. If they're weak, they're going to stay together. All right, so which of the following compounds will completely ionize in water? What are we looking for? Things that are strong. Strong acids or strong bases. Okay, so LiOH. How do we know that? What's, what column is lithium in? Group one. This is a group one. So this is a strong acid or base. 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 OH is a base. That's all right. And so this would completely ionize. I don't know why I'm doing it. Uh, equal sign. It will completely ionize. Okay. H2O. Hmm. This one's a little tricky, huh? No, it will not. So this is a weak acid and a weak base. So it can donate its hydrogen. It can accept a hydrogen, but most of the water molecules are H2O, okay? So that one's weak. Benzoic acid, C6H5COOH. I'm gonna give you a really big tip here. Here's my really big tip. If the acid has carbon, it is weak. Does it have carbon? Carbon containing, so it must be weak. Good, and it's a weak acid or base? Acid, because it would donate that hydrogen right there. All right, so y'all can say y'all came to class today and you got atic-itis, right? Y'all heard that on the video, atic-itis? I went to chemistry class and I got atic-itis. What does that mean? That is your way to remember how to name acids. So, when you look at an acid, there are two different kinds of acids. We have binary and tertiary acids, right? Binary meaning two, right? Just like we said before. If you have something that's binary, the way that you're gonna name it is you're gonna say hydro, you're gonna name the other element that's in the acid, right? HBr, HCl, HF, H, whatever. You're going to name the other element, but instead of ending the element in something like IDE, we're going to name that in IC and we're going to put the word acid. So HBr is hydrobromic acid. HCl, hydrochloric acid. HF, hydrofluoric acid, right? See the common? Okay. Tertiary is a little different. Tertiary, we don't write the hydro. Tertiary is where we have to go and look on that polyatomic ion table 
And you have to see what does it end in in the polyatomic ion table? Does it end in ATE or IT? So this is what you get from the polyatomic ion table. If it has an ATE, we're going to change that to an IC and put acid. If it has an IT, we're going to change that to OUS and add the word acid. Okay? Yeah? You try that? All right. Iodate. So if I have iodate, which is the ion of iodine, what's my formula going to be for my acid? Just add an H. This is your trick, just add an H. So what do I get? H I. Is this binary or tertiary? Binary. We only have two elements, right? So how am I going to name it? Hydro. And then we're not going to put I D E. Iodic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it sounds weird. IOD, iodic acid. So hydro iodic acid. And that there shouldn't be a space there. I don't know how to make that closer. Like it's one word hydro iodic. And then the second word's acid. Okay. Now, perchlorate. They're being really nice to you. You don't have to go to the table. ClO4, I'm going to stick a hydrogen on there. What do I get? HClO4. What else do you notice when I change this? What happened to this negative sign and this negative sign? Why did it go away? Because you're adding something positive. So now it's neutral. Very nice. So do I have uh, binary or tertiary? I have tertiary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the ending. It is ATE. So I'm going to change this ATE to what? I C. So I'm going to say per chlor instead of eight, I'm going to put perchloric acid. Okay, how about acetate? I'm just going to put a hydrogen on there. Change the charge. We're now neutral. How should we name this? Same thing, ATE to IC. So this is acetic acid. Very nice. Acetic acid. Heard that before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. So sometimes chemistry is really nice because it really starts to explain things that you hear, you know, things that you've experienced. Um. So if it's a tertiary acid, they put it on this end. If it's a binary acid, they put it on the other end. But I wouldn't mark it wrong, you know, because that wasn't part of the rules in teaching you how to write it. So I wouldn't mark that wrong. But what did it tell you on the homework when you did that? Like, did it say you need to rearrange or... But it didn't did it tell you you have the right elements, but you need to okay. put them in the right. No, it just didn't tell you anything. Okay, so when you're doing the homework, make sure when you have yeah. the the polyatomics, the when you go and get them, you put the hydrogen. Um, you tend to put the hydrogen over. Not always, not always. It's not a good. If you put it in, it doesn't work. Put the hydrogen on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to be for binary. It's always going to be like this. Always. You're always going to have the hydrogen on the left, but not so much for these. But anyway, all right. Complete and balance the following neutralization reactions. When you look at this HNO3, is that a strong acid or a strong base? A weak acid, a weak base? What do we got? This is a strong acid because we have one hydrogen and three oxygens, so two more oxygens and hydrogens. MgOH2. Oh, 
This is a weak what? Base. So what's going to happen to these, these substances? What are you going to make? Salt and water. A salt and water. So where does your water come from? You get a hydrogen and then you get a hydroxyl. Well, you're going to make some salt. So for this, it's going to be reversible because you have a weak. So you just have to put in a double arrow. So what's going to happen? You're going to have HNO3, MgOH2, right? We're weak, so we'll put a reversible arrow. What do you make? You, we're going to make water. So let's, let's see where we get our water from. We have one hydrogen here. And then here's our hydroxyl. Oh, y'all. I put my, uh, wasn't looking. I put my two in the wrong place. I can't scratch it out. It won't let me. Two goes there. What does that mean I have? Two hydroxyls, right? So H2O is really HOH. So I know I have two of these and only one of these. It's not going to balance. So I know I'm going to have to go in and balance this equation. So I'm just telling you to keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing this. Don't forget to balance your equation. So let's do this, and then we'll, we'll balance it, OK? All right, so that's water plus what else am I going to make? MgNO3. Ah. Hmm? So because the charge on magnesium is a plus two, and what's the charge on NO3? You can always look on your table. But you can look here also and see that hydrogen's a plus one, so NO3 would have to be a minus one. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of scratch that out. Uh, so am I balanced? I'm not balanced. What do I need? Say it again. So we're going to make two waters, right? Because we have two hydroxyls. So how do I balance that? I'm going to, I have four hydrogens on one side, but only three on the other. Put a two in front of the HNO3. Now I have two hydrogens there, two hydrogens in the MgOH, right? Now, how about my NO3? Am I balanced on NO3? Now I am, right? Now I am. Good. Okay, let's try the next one. HCl, and you should be put, putting your substances. I just, I did not. That's terrible of me. HCO3. Okay, so what do we have? HCl is a strong acid, right? I bring clay. And then NaHCO3, I have one hydrogen, I have three oxygens. Strong or weak? Strong. Okay, so what am I going to form? Hmm? A salt and water, now be careful. There's, there's some carbon in here. So what if, I'm going to make something else too. Carbon dioxide. So plus water, plus a salt. What salt am I going to make? So I'm going to take my Na, I'm going to take my Cl, and those two are going to make NaCl. So then my water comes from H um, and one of the oxygens and then another H from there. And then the other two oxygens and the carbon will go to CO2. So am I balanced? What? <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a lot. 
But either you're gonna make salt and water, or if there's carbon present, you'll make salt, water, and carbon dioxide. That's the only three things you're gonna make in a neutralization. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay, one more. Look at this. I don't see any carbon. So this should be nice and easy, right? So H2SO4, strong or weak? Strong, strong acid, NaOH, strong base, HBr, it's a strong, I bring clay, right? And then LiOH, Li is a group one, so it must be strong base. Don't the acid always going to be first? No, no. Good question, but the acid won't always be first is the question. All right, H2SO4 plus NaOH, we know that we're gonna make, it's a solid, <laughs> we know we're gonna make water, which is a liquid, and we're gonna make a salt. So where's our salt coming from? Our sodium and then the SO4. So Na SO4. Am I balanced on charges? Why not? What's wrong? Well, if I'm over here and I needed two hydrogens to balance out my SO4, somebody go look on the polyatomic ion table. If hydrogen is a plus one, what's SO4? A minus two. So what should my formula for NaSO4 be? Na2SO4. Good. Don't forget that. And are we balanced? Yes. No? Oh, no, we're not. Okay, so how do we balance? We need a two in front of NaOH. Anything else? Two in front of H2O. So those balancing skills, you gotta keep them up. All right. When does a reversible reaction reach equilibrium? So you remember when we were talking about the basketball players, y'all remember that conversation, that equilibrium conversation? It's the same sort of deal, right? So when you reach an equilibrium with those basketball players on the court and the basketball players on the bench, do you have an equal number of players on the bench as on the court? No, but what's equal? The amount or the number of players who are leaving the court and going to the bench and the amount or number of players who are leaving the bench and going on to the court, right? So let's use science terms to talk about our reaction. What's equal in a reversible reaction in a, that's at equilibrium? It's equal, it's equilibrium for a reason. So what's equal? Two things equal each other. No? Okay, so look, here's our court, U R T, and here's the bench, right? What, if this is at equilibrium, what two things are equal? We said number of players, right? And coming off, okay. So this arrow represents our forward direction, F-O-R-W-A-R-D, forward. This represents our reverse reaction. Right? 
because it's just like saying um, x goes to y and y goes to x, right? Same sort of deal. X is the bench, Y is the court. So yes. Oh, did I miss something on 9.18? I'll, um, I'll go back and pick it up in a second. So Adriana's right, it's the rate. So it's the rate of people leaving the bench and going to the court and the rate of people leaving the court and going to the bench. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of what? The reverse reaction. Another way to say rate of forward reaction, how else could we say that? We could say rate of formation of what? What's the forward? What are you making when you're going in the forward direction? Products. These two things are the same thing. Okay. How else could I say the rate of the reverse reaction? Rate of formation of reactants. These two things are the same thing. It's just saying it in a different way. We okay on that? You just have to, and I know like the rate of the forward reaction is forming products. So you just don't get that confused because that, that can happen. That can happen. All right, I gotta go back and pick up. Um, Y'all were telling me on the chat. Yeah, I just, I just left off B. All right, HBr, which is aqueous plus LiOH, which is a solid. What are we forming? Water and a salt. So our salt is going to come from lithium and I missed the R, HBr, right? So I make lithium bromide. Are my charges right? Yes, they are. One and one. Am I balanced? Yes. And we should make this a liquid and we should make this aqueous. And this should be aqueous. Don't forget your states. <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay. All right. So write an equilibrium constant expression for the following reactions. What is an equilibrium constant expression? What it's telling you is that at equilibrium, what's happening? Right? And that all depends on the concentration of the reactants and the products, right? So our equilibrium constant is going to include those concentrations. So y'all remember the, the general equation is K is equal to concentration of products over concentration of reactants. And what if we had two products? It would be like product one, product two, right? If you had two reactants, reactant one, reactant two, you would multiply them, okay? All right, so let's do it for A, but there are some rules when we're writing these equilibrium expressions. There are two things that we don't include. Solids, if they don't dissolve, right? If we call them a solid, that means they're not dissolving. So they have, they don't really have a concentration because they're not dissolved. In order to have a concentration, you have to be dissolved in something, right? It's moles per liter. Well, you're not dissolving, so you don't say it. What else do we not include? Liquids, liquids, because they also don't really have a concentration because they're not dissolving, right? They have a volume, but 
it's all the same liquid. Okay, so A, if I'm going to write my equilibrium constant, what should we write? Products over reactants. Charles, please don't kick. All right, so what do we write? Now, that's a great question. We need to include the coefficient, but where does the coefficient go? Coefficient becomes a superscript. So what are my products in A? Right here, this is a product. So put your substance in BR3. We don't include our state of matter. Put it in brackets and then take that coefficient and turn it into a superscript. So we only have one reactant I'm sorry, we only have one product. So this is our product, but we have two reactants. So we're gonna put them both. We're gonna put N2 and we're gonna say multiplied times BR2, but what else do I need to include? A superscript that is the coefficient. So this BR2 is raised to the three. Okay, B, K is equal to, start with your product, CO2, put it over your reactants. We have C, oh, what do you notice about C? It's a solid, do we include it? Nope, okay, so we don't include it. So then we go over to our next one, O2, and that's it. All right, you can look at K, once you put in all those values, once you get an answer and you, you actually solve for K, what you can do is you can know whether you're forming more products or you're forming more reactants. So all I'm gonna say is remember K is equal to products over reactants and you'll be able to figure it out. So write that down, I'm telling you, for every problem where you have to look at a K value and need to know if you're making products or re reactants, more of whichever one, write that down. So before we evaluate our A, B, and C, when would I have a K, K is greater than zero when what? K, K is big. This means K is big, you have a big K. So when you have bigger products, right? Okay, how about the reverse? What happens when we have more um, reactants? Then K is small, It's actually less than, not zero, it's less than one. We don't do zero, one. So this is um, less than one. So when products favored, favored, so this is when and how do we know that? It's just if this number is smaller than this number, k is going to be big, right? Because you're dividing by a small number. If in this case, r is a bigger number, right, we have more reactants, then the K or the, the solution to this is gonna be a really small number because you're dividing by a big number. You don't have to memorize anything other than this little bitty thing. So if I have one times 10 to the seventh, this is one times 10 to the seventh, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Is this a big K or a little K? That's really big. <laughs> this is really big. So tell me what's going to be favored, products or reactants? Here we're going to favor products. So you're going to have more products. 0 0.0045. That's our tiny number. What are you going to have more of? More reactants. B, you're going to have more reactants. Because that's going to end up, if you put a big number down here, you're going to get a really small number out. How about C? Golly, C got even smaller. So we have even more reactants. Now, what if I did this? I'm sorry. This one would also be reactants. Because that's a negative exponent, that's a small number. Okay, be careful with that. Okay. What do we got next? Oh, this is fun. I like these. Oh, no, no, no. But it's like a logic thing. It's fun. All you, but don't don't shake it. Don't shake it. <laughs> All you have to do is write on the side what you do and what the reaction does in response. Okay, so so let's do that. We're gonna make a little table, right? So this is gonna be us. This is gonna be the reaction, and then this is gonna be the result. Okay. So we have this we have this equation, right? Lead two iodine can be produced upon cooling lead two and iodide ions from a solution. Okay. So in which direction will the equilibrium shift, right or left, if the following changes occur to the reaction at equilibrium? When you add iodide, where is iodide in our reaction? In the reactant. Okay, so this is a reactant. So we're going to add it. That means we're going to increase the concentration of reactant. The reaction, this is a stress on the reaction. The reaction wants to be at equilibrium. So the reaction is going to react in an equal but opposite manner. So if you increase the concentration of reactants, the reaction is going to do the opposite. What's the opposite? Decrease reactants. How do you decrease reactants? Do we shift to the right or do we shift to the left? Right? If we go, if we go this way, what do we form? If we go this way, this is a right shift. What are we doing? We're making what? Products, right? If we shift this way, this is a left shift. What are we doing? We're making reactants. Okay, so we want to decrease the amount of reactants. Are we gonna have a right shift or a left shift? This is going to be a right shift shift. Because when you decrease reactants, you make products. I'm a little worried about this. <laughs> it's a three step. It's a three step. What did you do to the system? What's the reaction? Like what's what's going to happen after the stress? And then you have to figure out is that right or left? Okay, so always think a right shift is like the forward direction. Correct. And then the left shift is the reverse reaction. Reverse reaction, forward reaction. Okay. Okay, so if we heat the reaction, Where's heat? 
This is a product, right? So are we going to increase the amount of product or decrease the amount of product? We increase the amount of product. The reaction is going to do the opposite. What's the opposite? Decrease product. How do you decrease product? We go left. I'm telling you to write it down. If you write those steps down, you're less likely to get lost in your train of thought. I even sometimes get lost in my train of thought on this if I don't write it down. So I like to write it down. Okay. Remove lead to iodide. What is lead to iodide? This is a product. Are we increasing the amount of product or decreasing? We're decreasing product. What's the reaction going to do in response? Increase product. How do we increase product? We go right. I wish, I wish that they just said forward direction and reverse direction. I feel like the right and left is like another step that you don't need. I didn't make the rules. <laughs> Did not make the rules. Same thing. Right is always going to mean forward. Left is always going to mean reverse. Always. So why not just stick with forward and reverse? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Here's a tricky one. Cool the reaction. You're removing heat. So it's still heat. That's great. It's still heat. You, and heat is a product. So we are decreasing a product. Oh, y'all caught on so well. Now what? We're going to increase a product. So we're going to have a right shift. Okay. It's okay. We have we have plenty of time, right? We got today, we got Thursday, we got time. It's all right. Okay. Look at this. And we got another one. Did I did I really skip two in the lecture? The answers for 27 are, are in the book. So um let's do 28. Let's do 28. Did we do no, we just did 28. No, we didn't. Okay, I don't know, I'm just going crazy. All right, let's do 28 because your, your odd numbers are all and the answers are all in the book. So I wanna make sure we get to the ones you don't have the answers to. Okay, so when heated, carbon reacts with water to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So what's gonna happen? Let's draw our little grid. That's a terrible grid. Okay, so this is we, this is the reaction and this is the shift. So add heat. Heat is a reactant. So are we increasing or decreasing that reactant? We're increasing the reactant. So the reaction will decrease it. Same thing. And so if you want to draw yourself the arrow and say um, this is a right, which is the forward, right? And this is left, so this is reverse, you know, just to kind of help keep it straight in your mind. So if we wanted, if the reaction is going to decrease reactant, what kind of shift are we going to have? A right shift. Okay, a lower temperature. It's still a what, right? Temperature is still heat. So heat is a reactant. But in this case, we're cooling it. So what happens to our amount of reactant? It is gonna go down. So in response, the reaction will increase the amount of reactant and we're gonna have what kind of a shift? A left shift.
Yes, that is why this system works. The reaction will always, that's great, always do the opposite of what, to put in parentheses in quotes, we do, right? We are creating a, a stress on the reaction, right? When you're stressed, you have a reaction, right? If something's driving you crazy, you wanna get away from it. So it's the same thing. Okay, so you're removing carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a reactant or a product? Product. Okay, so are you increasing or decreasing? We are decreasing product, which means the reaction will increase product. You increase product, that's a forward reaction. So you're gonna have a right shift. Water, water is a reactant. We are gonna increase or decrease that reactant. Increase, so the reaction will decrease. If you're gonna decrease reactants, you're gonna have a right shift in the forward direction. I'm sure on how we get right and left. Right is forward, left is reverse. It's just, it's just what's on the left and what's on the right. So, so if over here is your left-hand side and this is your right-hand side, in order to go to the left, that's a left shift. To go to the right is a right shift. Yes, good, awesome. All right, I'm ending there for the day. We didn't get quite as far, but there aren't as many problems, I think. Well, maybe there are, but we'll do what we can, right? We are only human. All right. Let me know if you have any questions and you're free to go. If you have any questions on Zoom, send me an email. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Oh, maybe I'll end this. <laughs> Why does it just go away? No. Okay, let's try this now.